Welcome to episode number five of my Build Together series. Today we start cooling part one. Super excited. We're going to focus on radiators and fans. Plus, we're going to install the distro plates into our cases and the GPUs that we water blocked in the last episode. So let's get started. Now there are a lot of components in a PC that give off heat, so cooling is very important. That's why when you get a GPU, there's an air cooler already attached, which we talked about in the last episode. Take for example, the Tough Gaming build. The three fans on the GPU suck air from the bottom and push it to the top. And don't forget, you have a chance to win this Tough Gaming build. All you have to do, go to the link right here to learn more. You still have a little bit more time to enter. So fans facilitate air movement and then a radiator, which you use on liquid cooled PCs, dissipate heat. Now there's an inlet and an outlet on this radiator. Now every manufacturer is a bit different, but there is some sort of loop in here. So coolant goes into the radiator and as it travels through the loop, heat dissipates across these fins right here. This is what you want to be careful with. You don't want to mess up these fins. And as a result, it cools the coolant. And then you attach some fans, which helps optimize heat transfer. But before we mount any fans, it's important to know how a fan works. So take, for example, this house fan. It takes air from the back and pushes it through the fan to the front. Hence why Abby and Andy love it so much. But for a better visual, look what happens when I put a smoke grenade behind the fan. You see, the blades of the fan are shaped in a way to push the air forward. Hence why the smoke is getting pulled from the back to the front of the fan. Now when it comes to a PC fan, one of the easier ways to figure out the direction of airflow is to take your finger, follow along the fan blade to the tip, and then put your finger through. That right there is the direction of airflow. And that's really important to consider before we start to install fans because some of our fans we're gonna wanna push air into the PC and other fans we're gonna wanna pull air out of the PC. So when you push air in, that's called intake and when you pull air out, that's called exhaust. So for example, if we talk specifically about the front of the case, Remember, air goes this way. So this would mean we mount a fan like this. We have intake, air going into the PC. But say, the same position, the front, we flip the fan like this. Where does the air go? It goes this way now. Out, it's being pulled out. So this would be an example of exhaust. So that's a bit of the basics about airflow. But as we start to build, sometimes we give up optimization of flow for aesthetics because maybe we think something looks better even though it may not cool as well. And that's where I'd say things get a bit controversial. Now, I already know I'm gonna say some things that some of you don't agree with and don't like at all. And that's okay. I highly encourage a productive conversation in the comments down below. So the inside of a PC, it gets hot. And when you're building a PC, you have decisions to make on how to best reduce the heat. Now, we've all heard that heat rises, and while I totally agree with that, I'm not disputing it at all whatsoever, I don't actually factor that in too much when I'm planning out my fan configuration. Whereas, I've noticed that a lot of people in the community tend to use that to justify why they've mounted their fans in a particular orientation. For example, often you'll hear, because heat rises, those top fans are exhaust, they're pulling the heat out along with the back fan, and then the front fans are intake. And when you think about it, it kind of makes sense, but when you're building a liquid-cooled PC, there are a few things we need to consider. So let's say you're in a bedroom with a gaming PC with the doors closed. What's gonna happen? Your room is gonna get way hotter than the other rooms in the house, presuming you don't have gaming PCs everywhere, but you get the point. Apply the same concept to a PC. You have a PC with all the panels on, the inside is gonna get way hotter than the ambient temperature. Now most PCs run about 35 to 65 degrees Celsius, which is about 95 to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So for the most part, the ambient room temperature is always going to be cooler than the temperature inside your PC. So if you're trying to maximize cooling on your water-cooled PC and pulling the hot air that is indeed rising into your radiator, it doesn't make much sense. Flipping the fans, kind of like what we did here on the Tough Gaming Builds on the AIO, this means we're introducing cool air rather than pulling in hot air. Now the truth is an exhaust position isn't wrong, it just might be a few degrees hotter. And if you're trying to maximize the most amount of cooling performance, then radiators should always be intake. Now there's always gonna be exceptions and sometimes people just mount fans in a certain orientation because they like the aesthetic. Again, you're gonna have sometimes those variations between people that are building for performance versus people who kinda are building more with a look and aesthetic in mind. Also, cases in general, they vary too, and that's why I always recommend it's important to kind of watch full case reviews to get an understanding of what it would be like to build in a particular case. And the truth is, once everything kind of normalizes, the difference is negligible. But I do want to say this, it's never okay to throw hate or snarky comments at someone just because you think they mounted fans in the wrong orientation. So I think if you really care about performance, all your radiators should be intake but if you really want it to be hardcore, this is how you should make your radiators. So with this Tough Gaming giveaway build, I intentionally mounted these two fans right here to be intake. So that way cool air is going directly into the radiator. I also made sure that the three front fans are intake and the rear 140 millimeter fan is exhaust. Then in the bios, I set the front fans to run at turbo, the top to run at normal, and then the rear also at turbo. So that was kind of my thinking. Now, if there was not an AIO and I did not have a radiator up here, I would have definitely made the fans on the top exhaust. Now this could be an entire series of its own and there are a lot of videos out there, but the more air you have pulling into the case, this will be positive pressure. The more air that's pulled out of the case, this will be negative pressure. Now, when you pull air out of the case, air is gonna wanna creep in every crevice it can find. So you will probably have a lot more dust built up in all the crevices with a negative pressure system. So that is not really recommended. Now I've seen some videos that suggest having a more balanced system is best, but I've also seen better cooling performance with some positive pressure systems. And really, unless you kind of test it out and weigh all the variables, I mean, you're really not gonna know. So if you're watching someone's video, and you don't agree with how they mounted the fans, put something constructive in the comments because really people, at the end of the day, we need to work together and we're gonna be much better working together than against one another. So if you haven't been following along with the series, which I suggest you go back and rewatch some of the videos, but these are the PCs that we've been working on. So we're gonna get started on this one, our Lee and Lee. Now every case manual is gonna give you different fan and radiator configurations, but before you make a decision and purchase things, you need to think about everything else that you're going to install into your case. For example, this 360 millimeter radiator fits beautifully in the bottom of this Lee and Lee case. Right here, boom. And if I attached my GPU horizontally, there would be plenty of space for the fittings and tubing that we need for our custom loop. But I wanna install this vertically so we could appreciate the RGB and the liquid, which means we need a vertical mounting GPU kit, which is actually really easy to install. You just pop out the back panel and put this entire piece into place. But as you can see, this mount is so close to the inlet and the outlet, which is gonna make it really hard to attach a fitting and tubes. So I have a few options. I can either cut a hole in this bracket so I can put the tubes in place, or I could use a shorter radiator. This is a 240 millimeter radiator and it's gonna make it so much easier to access the inlet and outlet. Now one might think, well, why not just flip the radiator to the other side so your inlet and outlet is closer to the front? And that would be a great idea, but we're installing this distro plate onto the front 
and there's still not enough room to access those ports. Which, by the way, in the next episode, I'll tell you a lot more about distro plates. Today, we're just going to install it. So what I've decided is that we are going to use two 240 millimeter radiators. They'll both have two fans on them. One will be on the bottom, one will be on the side, and they will both be intake. Then we will put three fans directly onto the case on the top. That will be exhaust along with a fan in the back, which will also be exhaust. So technically before you install a radiator, you should flush it out with hot distilled water. Now they do make a cleaner, but I don't have that. And you also have to dispose of that in a special way. So we wanna make sure that we close off one of the ports. Then we're gonna add water to the other side. It doesn't take a lot. And the SE240 takes about 120 milliliters. So we're talking very little liquid. We'll put like 10 more mLs in there. You gotta close up the other port because we don't wanna get liquid all over this. That would not be good. Go like this real quick just to make sure. Yep, okay. And then shake it. Shake it. This is actually a first for me. I've never done this and I should have been doing this all along. So here we go. We're doing it the right way. All right, that's probably good enough. So now we are going to take this drain port. Ooh, that is some clean liquid. So we're basically gonna just repeat the process to all of our radiators just to make sure and then we'll attach our fans. Wow. Okay, this is really interesting because remember I said how the fins dissipate the heat? The actual fins are hot after putting this liquid in. <laughs> that is really, that's really cool. <laughs> So I think it's pretty safe to say that EK radiators are clean. I was at least expecting to see, I don't know, maybe some kind of metal flakes or something, but you could take a bath in this water. All right, let's install our fans. Now, anytime you mount a fan onto a radiator, your radiator comes with two types of screws. Some are long and some are short. The longer screws are meant to go through the fan and then attach to the radiator. Whereas the shorter screws are the ones that you use to actually attach the radiator to your PC. The long and short is almost universally 30 millimeters and five millimeters. Now we're gonna have to make a slight modification because I decided that I'm gonna use these Noctua fans and they are a lot more slim. So if I were to use the standard 30 millimeter screw, it would be way too long and go straight into these fins, which we don't wanna do. So instead we're gonna use these 20 millimeter screws, but they're silver and I want them to be black. So we're gonna paint them black. Now, obviously this is not necessary. You don't have to do this, but I'm just picky and I want everything to match. <laughs> I mean, spray paint would have been easier. I would have been done in two seconds, but I don't have black spray paint. This works just as well. So while we wait for our screws to dry, we can start attaching our top fans. So again, we're going to install these in an exhaust pattern. So remember, air goes through this way. So if we wanna take heat out, we have to install our fan like this. The air is gonna go through the fan and out the top of the PC. And one last thing that you have to pay attention to is the location of the cable because you don't want to mount your fan in the correct orientation, but have your cables dangling out the front. So you want to make sure you direct your cables to the back. And when you're mounting fans directly onto a case, you're going to use the screws that come with the fan. And I suggest not to tighten the screws all the way until you kind of have your fans in place and that way you can line it up exactly how you want. And then we'll also attach our back fan, which again is also going to be exhaust. So it's gonna go this way, just like that, except we don't want this in the front. So we're gonna turn it so our cable is in the back. Oh. <laughs> My first time using it. Here we go. I guess that makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> I don't have to grip it like this. <laughs> ah, that's a better design. 
And these are dry, so we can attach our fans to our radiators. Now, again, we have to pay attention to how we're gonna mount the radiator, because that's also gonna depend on the orientation of how we put the fan in relation to the cable. Again, so these screws that we painted are 20 millimeter screws into the radiator. This now is gonna go on in the rear, and then we're gonna screw in our fans right here. And before we mount this on the bottom, I wanna get our distro plate in. This is starting to look amazing. All right, now we can finally get this last radiator in place. So we're gonna take the dust filter out. I think I'm gonna put it completely upside down. Now normally when you screw the radiator directly on a PC case, I always have used washers. I'm not sure why washers didn't come, so I'm, I'm just gonna use washers. It's better to have them than not. So to recap, on the bottom we have intake along with this over here, and on the top and in the rear we have exhaust. Now the last thing we're gonna do on this PC is mount the GPU, and because we're vertically mounting it, we need this riser cable. This end attaches to the mount, this side connects directly to the motherboard, and then our GPU will connect right here. So first we have to relocate our standoffs to the front of the mount. We take the riser cable and we attach it, which then is gonna get screwed in. You open it by pushing the tab in, and you'll know it's locked when that tab comes back in place. And then we can put our GPU in. Put our hand underneath here because we don't want to push down so hard. And boom, it's in place, it clicked. There we go, now we just got to screw it in. So when mounting the GPU, I realized that this rear fan was in the way, so I had to remove it in order to get the GPU in place, so something to keep in mind. The other thing, because the GPU is so silver, I'm considering possibly painting these radiators now, now that I kind of see it all together, which would mean I would have to take everything out. But for now, this is where we're gonna leave it, and we're gonna jump to our Fantex case. So the plan for this build is to use two 360 millimeter radiators, one on top, one in the front, both will be intake, and then a rear fan for exhaust. Now this distro plate is going to go right here, but because the motherboard is so wide, remember this Extreme Glacial is an EATX, I felt like I wasn't gonna have much space for my cables. So I had to think a little creatively and I decided I'm just gonna add risers so the distro plate projects out a little bit more and gives me space for cables. And we're also gonna have room to vertically mount our GPU. So we're gonna use our screws directly from the radiator. The long ones will go through the fan and then the short ones will be for mounting it onto the case. And one of the cool things about this Fantex case is that the top comes right off so it makes it that much easier to mount a radiator. Next, fan, same direction. So you wanna screw it on enough so it doesn't fall off, but not super tight until you know exactly where you wanna place it. Everything's connected, so now this is so easy. We literally, all we have to do is just put it right through and it connects like that. And before we put the front fans in, we're gonna get the distro plate in place or we will never get this to fit. This is gonna be snug, but we're gonna make it work. Inlet and outlet are gonna have to be on the bottom because there is no way we'll be able to attach a fitting up there. It's way too tight. Yeah, so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do it like this. Does that really fit? All right, so I'm having a little trouble getting this into the slot. I know it fits because I already tested it out prior to this video, but sometimes you have to loosen one thing to get another thing in, so I may have to loosen the distro plate a little bit and kind of wiggle this in all at the same time. Come on, baby. That's in. I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work. Distro plate screws back in. All right, so now we can connect three fans and these are gonna be intake, so they're gonna go this way. So now we install this in the rear. Remember, air goes this way, so it's going to be exhaust. It's gonna go like that. And then 
we can install our GPU and be done with this. So to vertically mount our GPU in this case, you have to use this plate. This comes with the Fantex case. I just looked at the manual. It goes right in like this. You get your screws from your little caboodle, and then we're gonna attach the riser cable, and then we can pop on the GPU. To get our GPU in place, we line it up, and boom. All right, so two down, one more to go. Let's start with our Inwin 303. So similar to the Fantex, we're also gonna use two 360 millimeter radiators. One is gonna go up top, and then the other is gonna go on the bottom and then we're gonna attach our fans. But because I'm choosing this configuration, that means I'm not gonna be able to mount my GPU vertically because there's just simply not enough room. As you can see, it's touching the fan. Now, if I were to get rid of the fan, could it still work? Uh, no. So we're gonna mount it horizontally, that way I don't have to give up the radiator and fans. But that doesn't mean you can't mount a GPU vertically in this case, you definitely can, and here are some ways to do so. This is a vertical GPU kit by Coolmaster, this is kind of more of a universal one by LinkUp, and then this one is specifically made by Inwin. So let me show you real quick what each one looks like. Now this one is the Cooler Master and it's easy to mount. I like how you can't see a platform under the GPU, but still it's too tight to fit a fan. And actually you can't even fit two fans down there. This one is the Link Up and it actually feels the sturdiest of the three, but we have the same issues with the fans. And this time around our GPU actually touches the RAM. Not, not good. And it's the exact same story with the Inwin vertical mounting kit. So if you're planning to vertically install your GPU in this case, just keep in mind you may have to order a few kits because as you can see, two of the three didn't work with this water blocked card. So we're definitely gonna mount this horizontally, but first we're gonna get to our radiators and fans. Which brings me to my next point. So remember earlier when I mentioned that sometimes people will choose to mount a fan based on aesthetics because they like the way it looks better rather than optimization of flow? Well, we're gonna do that in this particular case because up top, the radiator is positioned like this, which means these top fans are going to be front and center. And if I kept going with the idea that our radiators should be intake, that would mean my fans would look like this, but I don't really like the way that looks. I'd rather them look like that. So the top radiator is going to be exhaust and then the bottom will be intake. Now the other thing, I mentioned that I was gonna take apart a radiator and actually try and paint it, which I've done some tests and it actually works. It's not hard to do, but I kinda like the way the black radiators look and I'm not really sure if I wanna paint them yellow. So I'm still kinda deciding. We're gonna, I don't know, I gotta, I gotta make a decision quick, but as you can see, I already swapped out the dampers to these yellow ones. I think it looks really cute, but should I paint the radiators yellow? Hmm. Well, regardless, I wanna show you how easy it is to take apart a radiator, and maybe afterwards we'll either have black or yellow radiators. So let me at least show you how you can do it. So to take apart this EK radiator, you have to unscrew four little screws on each end, and then wiggle this long trim piece off. And for the little ends, just unscrew the inlet and outlet and slide it off. And then we'll just put the radiator off to the side because we don't wanna damage that. Next, you have to sand it down. Now I may be sanding a little bit more than needed. I'm using 80 grit to take most of the black off. And just to make sure everything is smooth, I decided to finish it off with 220 grit. Now I have to quickly wipe off all the dust and debris before I can prime, which I'm using some isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel. Now priming is key, so don't overlook this step. I'm just applying one coat and then I'm gonna let it dry overnight. Okay, so I woke up this morning and I decided, well, to just go for it. You only live once, right? Now this paint says to apply two light coats about 10 minutes apart, then a medium coat. I think I ended up doing a total of four before letting it really dry for six hours. And this is the result. I think it came out really nice. I want to do more now. The worst part is just the prep, the sanding. Everything else is fun. So now we'll just reverse the steps to put it back together. So we're gonna slide on each of the shorter ends, then screw on those ports. 
Pop on the longer trim pieces and then attach the four screws on each side. You could use satin, you could use glossy, you could use flat matte paint. I prefer more of a matte look. I'm, I'm really digging this. I'm happy that I decided to go this way. And now we can finally mount our fans. And remember, the top, we decided that we're going to do exhaust so we can see this part of the fan, and then the bottom will be intake, so it will look like that. And because the dampers on these fans are a bit different, we actually have to use the screws that came with the fans to attach it to the radiator. If we were to use the long radiator screws, it would go straight into those fins. I just realized before I mount the fans like this, I actually have to switch the dampers because right now they're set up for exhaust, not intake. Should have thought of that when I was mounting these, but I got a little too excited by the yellow. So I gotta swap these out. All right, tighten these suckers up. This is our bottom, and here's our top. So let's get them in the case. I think I'm gonna have to call this PC sunshine, because that's what it reminds me of, the sun. It's making me very happy. So when I was trying to install this on the bottom, I ran into a little bit of an issue because the holes on the back of the radiator to mount to the case, they weren't lining up. So I grabbed another radiator, which this is actually a newer design by EK. It's still a slim SE360, um, but when I put it in, pretty much the same story. The only way that you can get it to somewhat work is if the fill ports are closer to the distro plate and then you can see all the holes except for the last two. It's the exact same way with this one. So we're gonna flip the fans because I need the inlet and outlet to be closer to the distro plate, and then we're gonna mount it, but unfortunately, these two screws over here, we're not gonna be able to mount. The fans will still be intake. We're just turning the fans around so that the wires aren't in the front of the case. This is on really secure, so I'm pretty sure the six out of eight screws is gonna do the trick. And I do have to say that this particular case it's a bit tricky because the motherboard is positioned so low, it basically touches the bottom of the case, which if you think about it, if you were gonna be plugging in a GPU and then let's say a Camlink Pro if you're streaming, it's just, you're not gonna have the space. You would have to give up the radiator, possibly even the fan, uh, depending on what you wanted to plug in. So just something to keep in mind. I think aesthetically it looks really cool, but functionally, it's definitely a bit more challenging than let's say the Fantex case that we're working in. All right, let's get you in. The distro plate is already in this case because this is the EK Special Edition in Win 303. So last up is the GPU, which we're going to mount horizontally, right? Yes. So all we have to do is make sure the latch is open and pop it in place. Then we have to put in a finishing screw on the inside. We are done. So what do you think? It's really starting to come together, huh? I, I love the way that these came out. If anything, I kind of want to paint more. So maybe I'll surprise you and in the next episode, there'll be even more pops of color. You'll have to wait and see. But speaking of the next episode, we'll be focusing exclusively on our custom water loops to planning, to bending, to cutting. It's gonna be lots of fun. Plus, we're gonna have to work on some cables because there's still things that we have to plug into our motherboard and if we start adding more and more into the case, it's gonna be that much harder to access. So next episode is gonna be really important. You definitely wanna tune in. Also, I just wanna remind you that you still have time to enter the Tough Gaming Giveaway. So head to the link right here. It's open for a few more days. And for more tips on PC DIY, make sure to visit the link right here. It's also down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you soon. Bye.